You know, a couple Sundays ago, we looked at some scriptures identifying the good news that Jesus preached in his short ministry here on this earth. One of those scriptures was Matthew 4, 23, which reads, Jesus traveled through the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. His good news message was about the coming kingdom of God. It was all about this new world order that the Lord Jesus was going to establish here on this world. His government, his rule here on earth. Luke also shared a story with us in Luke 4, where it says the crowds begged Jesus not to leave them. But he replied, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God. That was why I was sent. So the good news that Jesus went around from village to village preaching was the coming of the kingdom of God. And I find it interesting that the Lord Jesus even taught his disciples how to pray. They came to him and said, Lord, how should we pray? And he shared with them what we now call the Lord's Prayer. It can be found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. You know, when I was younger, you know, I kind of used the New King James Version. I recited the New King James Version of the Lord's Prayer. Maybe you did too. I'm going to recite it to you. Maybe if you know it, you want to recite it along with me. Jesus instructed them to pray like so. He says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Even our prayers should be crying out for the coming of the kingdom of God. Thy kingdom come. You know, that's serious business. We are essentially asking God to transform this world, to change this world from what we are living in, to be more like his kingdom in heaven. And there is a sense of urgency in these words. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as we ask God to let your kingdom come right here, right now, right away. We're telling God that we're not satisfied with the way things are going in this world. We're not happy with what we're living in and what we're seeing and what we're experiencing, and we're asking God to change those things and to change them quickly. You know, as we examine the scriptures of Matthew and Luke and Mark, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, they're used interchangeably over and over again, meaning the same thing. And every single day while Jesus was here on this earth, he would share something new with his disciples about the kingdom of God, including how we should be praying telling them, telling us that we need to petition God to send his kingdom to this world. Here and now. We don't want to wait, Lord. We want your kingdom now. Thy kingdom come. We're praying thy kingdom come because that's what Jesus came to to do. He came to establish his kingdom here on this world. That was the focus of his ministry. Scripture tells us in Matthew 4, 17 that Jesus told everyone who would listen to him, repent of your sins 
and turn to God because the kingdom of heaven is near. It also says in Matthew 4, verse 23, that Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. Even in his final day here on this earth, while he was being cross-examined by Pilate, it says in John 18 that Jesus said, My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. My kingdom is not of this world. Lord, let your kingdom come to this world. Jesus came to reestablish God's originally planned righteous society for this world, for this earth. This was a society made up of men and women who were fully dedicated to carrying out the will of God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. But the kingdom that Jesus said that he would establish, it was much different than other kingdoms in the world today. Because it was going to be moral. It was going to be righteous. It was going to be just. Earthly kingdoms in the world, they're worldly. And they're basically just centered about it. You know, they're geographical. They're, they're centered in a particular location. But the kingdom of God is reserved for those who recognize and who follow the truth that is revealed through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God gives you the freedom to choose. You can choose the kingdom of God, or you can choose the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of the devil. Christians should live their lives and they should make their decisions based upon God's will for their life. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Everything we do, from raising our children to spending our money to even how we vote, should all be based on what God wills us to do in accordance to God's will for our lives and for this world just as things are done in heaven. That is why we are instructed in Matthew 6, verses 33, and we all know this, seek first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and then God will give you everything that you need. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The kingdom of God must come first. The kingdom of God must come first. It's got to be established in our hearts. If we can establish it in our hearts, then we can affect and we can, ch we can change society as it is today as we know it. <clears throat> you know, in this crazy world that we're living in now, you know, all this social media and propaganda, manipulation, censorship. Evangelism should come before social action. Evangelism should come first because evangelism is sharing the good news of the kingdom of God. Evangelism must take priority because only by spreading the good news of the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ, only then can human hearts be changed. Not by anything we post on Facebook. Jesus came to spread the gospel. He came to share the good news of the coming kingdom of God. And that includes how you should pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be Kingdoms in this world come and go, but the kingdom of God 
It's going to last forever. And let's face it, everything that we see in the world today is pretty shakable. You know, buildings crumble. Companies go under, they go out of business. Degrees, certificates, licenses, they all expire. Cars break down. Even our own bodies, our own bodies wear out. They fall apart over time. Everything is shakable. But Hebrews 12, 28 says that God is going to give us a kingdom that cannot be shaken. If you remember when the angel Gabriel came and spoke to Mary, he told her that she was going to give birth to a son that would rule over the house of his father Jacob and his kingdom there would be no end. The kingdom of God, that's the last chapter of God's story. It all began with the Garden of Eden. So praying your kingdom come links us with all of God's faithful throughout all of history. Because it's faithful. They have surveyed this wreckage that we live in, this fallen world that we live in, and they all had a hope and a desire for something better. There needs to be something better than the world that we are living in. So we look forward to that time when the Lord Jesus <clears throat> will become both our earthly and our heavenly king. Yeah. Yeah. When we pray, thy kingdom come, <clears throat> we are asking God to hasten the day Hasten the day when the Lord Jesus Christ himself descends from heaven and he reclaims his rightful place in this world as our ruler and as our king. That's exactly what the angels even prophesied and told the apostles, the disciples, as they were witnessing Jesus as he was ascending into heaven. The angels told them, this same Jesus would return to this world one day. The same way you see him leaving, the same way he will return. <clears throat> and this is the same Jesus that defeated death. This is the same Jesus that defeated the devil. But the devil refuses, refuses to acknowledge that he's been defeated. So the battle continues. The battle continues between the two kingdoms, between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. And that is why that we as believers need to pray, thy kingdom come. We need to set our sights on the eastern sky. We're living here in the eastern sky and as we wait for the God of all eternity to return personally to this earth and to be our king. And when that day finally comes, Jesus is going to trample on the head of Satan. He's going to judge the workers of inequity. And he's going to right all the wrongs of this world. What a great place this is going to be. And the best part of all of that <clears throat> is that day is coming soon. That day is coming soon. But until that time, we need to seek first the kingdom of God. And we need to pray from our heart, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The, king of, the kingdom of God is not like other kingdoms because the kingdom of God is a matter of our hearts. It's in our hearts. You live by the values that matter to God. Righteousness, holiness, humility, compassion, sacrifice, charity, joy, and forgiveness. 
whenever any of us pray, we're praying either my kingdom come or thy kingdom come. If you're praying thy kingdom come, then you're also praying my kingdom must go. More of you and less of me. God's kingdom cannot come unless your kingdom is going. Your kingdom and God's kingdom, they can't exist. They can't coexist together. You can't serve two masters. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. That's Luke 18. You enter the kingdom of God by having the faith of a child fully committed, fully believing, and asking the Lord Jesus to become the king of your life. No one else can enter the kingdom for you. It requires a definite decision on your part. So we must first Seek the kingdom of God. If a loved one is sick, we declare and we decree, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's his will that we all be healed. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to heal us. Everywhere that Jesus went, it says, all were healed. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. If you pass by a TV and the lies and the deceit of reporting from CNN or MSNBC or ABC or Fox is on the news, you say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. His kingdom is the truth. He doesn't deceive. He doesn't force people to do things. He doesn't manipulate. He doesn't collude. His kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as is in heaven. Let us have the truth. Let us know the facts. If your car breaks down or your refrigerator goes on to fritz, if your computer has a virus, you just need to speak it forth. Lord God, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Nothing breaks down in heaven. Everything is working. If Facebook or Google censors you and tells you that, hey, you have violated their community standards, you just pray, Lord God, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And let the Lord come down and let the truth come down and let his freedom reign and let his liberty Take over your life because that's what his kingdom does. His kingdom is about freedom. It's not about censorship and preventing you from doing things. God gives you a free, the freedom of choice. You can make your own decisions. But if you follow his will, thy will be done. You're going to have a fantastic life. If your school is teaching your children critical race theory, CRT, or they're having your children question their sexuality, you need to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in my schools for my children. God doesn't make any mistakes. There's only two sexes. We got males and we got females. It's biology. There's only one of two sexes. There should be no question about whether you are a male or a female, Lord God. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our schools, Lord God. Have our teachers teach our children the truth. Like I said, the only sax that should be taught in school is play it with your hands, and it's got makes beautiful music. 
<clears throat> when you say, yes, Lord, thy kingdom come, then your thoughts and your prayers, they're all on Jesus. Your foresight, your mind, your thoughts are on Jesus. And you pray things like, Lord Jesus, may your kingdom come in my life today. May your values direct my thinking and my decision making. May your kingdom be advanced by the things that I say and by the things that I do. Help me to do your will this day and all the days of my life. And when you pray, pray for this church. Pray for the pastors and the ministers. Pray for the teachers, and the intercessors, and the worshipers, and the members of the congregation. Pray that thy kingdom come to this church, and that your will be done in this church. Give us this day your daily bread. You know, if you, if you run out of money before you run out of month, <laughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done in my bank account. Yeah, there's no lack in heaven. There's no shortages in heaven. There's no insufficient funds in heaven. Thy kingdom. I will be done. Pray for your for his kingdom to come in your community and in the neighborhood that you live in. Pray for your state, your nation, that thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Pray throughout the entire world that his kingdom will come and his will will be done. And, oh, God, give us leaders who fear your name and respect your laws. Yes. And live morally and righteously. Yes. Wow, what a different world we would live in. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. That's not a passive prayer. It seeks action. So, Lord, we pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done.